Welcome back again today, friends. We are doing another big batch, massive freezer cooking time. One day, two days, three days, four, I don't know. How many meals will we get? Will it be 20, 50, or 12? I don't know. This could be some kind of poem. We need Dr. Seuss, but we are still cooking through this Trim Healthy Starter book where food freedom begins. And in my last freezer cooking video, I explained the plan a bit and my journey with eating the Trim Healthy Mama plan way and the years and the ups and downs and the hiccups and my total so far, so far, yeah, so far 54 pound weight loss where this is the food that I put in my mouth. I also walk, I also run, sharing all of that, but let's get cooking today. The first thing that we're gonna start with is their oatmeal on the go cup. And if you have this book, this recipe is on page 61. As always, I will link, I do believe I found this one online where they had shared it on their Facebook page. So I will link what recipes they have shared in the description below and or recipes close to it from Trim Healthy Mama bloggers over the years. But these oatmeal on the go cups, uh, so this recipe in the book is supposed to make six to nine and we are going to at least times five the recipe, how we do all the things. We also have three different soups that we are going to do for the freezer. Let's see here, I'll try not to sing it. We're going to do their loaded broccoli and cheese soup. I have containers that we are going to freeze these soups in. We are also going to do, this is on page 124, 25, their trim train taco soup. I've done this one several times. It's delicious and you can tweak it in a bunch of different ways. This I have several kiddos that love this. It's one of my favorites. It's the first soup I ever made of theirs. I believe, let's see here, they call it, yeah, Just Like Campbell's Tomato Soup. It's, it's just delicious. Can I just tell you how delicious it is? We are also going to do a recipe from over on my blog, largefamilytable.com, a Philly cheesesteak casserole. I've done that low carb recipe on this channel several times over the years. I believe we'll be doing a times four times six batch. We will get to that. And we're also gonna do their ranch hand taco salad, which we're obviously not going to freeze the salad. But as far as doing some meal prep, I can do their directions for their homemade dressing for that. We can do the ground beef and the prep, and I can actually shove that in my face coming up during these cooking days. Let's get started with this. There'll be some other meal preps and other adventures that happen in this video too, but we gotta get started somewhere. Alrighty, so here's our ingredients. So I've got six cups of old fashioned oats over here. I also have this box of frozen blueberries. I just took my hand and broke these up from Azure. I technically need about five cups of blueberries. I'm eyeballing this and thinking it's probably four-ish. We're gonna use what we have. Um, let's see here. Egg whites. We'll need a little bit of salt. We have our aluminum-free baking powder. Um, technically, so banana extract and vanilla. So, okay, imitation vanilla and no banana extract. We do have our five bananas and we are going to use a cup and a half of sweetener and some almond milk. I had, oh yes, and then some protein powder so that we will be getting, it'll be like one and a fourth cups of their pristine whey protein powder. And if you see any of these out of the corner of your eye, those are just left from other cooking we were doing. We'll need those in other recipes coming up, but now we're gonna get going with these oatmeal on the go cups. Okay, so I'm just gonna get my oven preheating. And we'll get our whole muffin pans. How many dozen we'll get out of this. Your guess is as good as mine. So let's see here. So we got our oatmeal. Now I'm going to put in our 
cup and a half of sweetener. And again, the THM ladies, they sell their sweeteners. I am using different zero calorie, gluten free, monk fruit basically. Sweeteners from the Walmart. And so in my last video, we made three dozen of their Trimtastic cupcakes and those are gone and they were so good. One evening I saw a teenager with like four of them on a plate taking them back to their room. So when the kids gobble them down, you know they're good. And they were also gluten free and such, or sugar free. change this and make it cranberry orange, apple cinnamon. Very good. For apple cinnamon, replace blueberries with finely diced apple. Or half of a large apple. Okay. Okay, so there's ways to doctor it up. But again, I'm just going to use these blueberries because I have them and not everyone is a blueberry fan, but enough of us like blueberries that they get eaten. And let's see here. Combined all the ingredients in a large bowl. Okay, well, we're just doing that, aren't we? Just gonna continue on. So here I am. We are mixing up all of the ingredients in this bowl. I do end up using about a cup and a half of the protein powder. That's okay, it'll be a little protein. A little extra protein, I mean. and. I get excited thinking, oh boy, I can use my big masher, but it, yeah, it's just the thing I need to mash is the five bananas, and I don't need no big masher for that. I just need a fork, <laughs> so I get out the fork. The fork certainly does the job, and then we just take the time to mix everything together. For a moment, I thought, oh, I don't know if there's enough liquid, but it does soak up, and it looks looks much better once we have taken the time to stir it all together. So we are making these oatmeal to go cups. Definitely going to try them with the blueberry. I think the blueberry will be a hit, as I said, with my folks who like the blueberry. And then another go round, I would like to do the apple cinnamon. So these are considered an e-meal, which means they are lower fat and a medium healthy carb. And of course, like all the THM meals, they're anchored in protein. And so this would be a quick grab and go breakfast or a healthy snack. And it can be paired with some Greek yogurt, lots of ways that you can swing it. Okay, so here is how it looks once it is all stirred up. And now we are going to get these in our muffin pans, my silicone muffin liners. And these should, um, it says they'll take about 17 minutes or so possibly to check them at the 15 minute mark. So let's get these in the oven and we will move on to doing healthy soups for the freezer.
a minute or two, I'm going to set my watch timer for 15 minutes and then we will pull those pans out and get our other, uh, it's, it is, it's like five extra muffins. So just under three and a half dozen of those oatmeal to go cups. Agreed. So the tops on the first dozen got a little dark, but that's okay. They're not burnt and they're delicious. So yes. Alrighty, so we are just going to put these oatmeal on the go muffin cups in this container for tonight. I'm hopeful to get two more things done this evening. The video will continue on though. Tomorrow is another day. I would like to get done. They have a cake called Bust a Myth Banana Cake, and that's because there was a tale going going around these interwebs at one point that you could not have a banana that a banana was not on plan so it is a cake made of bananas and of course these cups had bananas as well and i want to get that done i feel like that'd be an easy thing to get done this evening and also the better than campbell's tomato soup i had folks bring up some tomato sauce and some home canned chicken broth that going on the stove. And that will be good for this evening, and then we will continue on from there and get some more cooking projects done in this week. nutritional yeast. We're doing it our way. We're going to get a decent sized batch and I know there are several folks who live here who really love this soup and so I best make a big batch if I hope to get some in the freezer too.
I'm just gonna open up our whole can broth, put this in, got our nutritional yeast out also. Walmart grocery pickup that I can drive to and they put it in my car, but they can also bring it to my house now. I know, it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay. And this can opener decided it wanted me to talk good about it in this video, so it's straightened up. That was good. And let's see, it's a mineral salt and then of course black pepper additionally that's needed. as an S meal. Again, if you're not doing THM, don't worry about it. It's just a good, healthy tomato soup. But an S meal in, T in THM world means that it has healthy fats in it. So that is what we're focusing on. They also say that you can also pair it with grilled cheese with their special homemade bread or a salad or anything that you would like.
Okay, so now this is their beautiful Bust a Myth Banana Cake. Their recipe should make, it says you can do an eight inch square baking pan or a nine by 13. So I'm planning on us doing about five nine by 13s because again, that is who we are. All righty, so we are gonna do this Bust a Myth Banana Cake. And I have times fived it, so it's gonna be 10 bananas. 10 cups of rolled oats ground into a flour in the blender, so we'll have to do that. Uh, we will be doing two and a half cups of rolled oats left whole, mineral salt, baking powder, baking soda, our sweetener, Greek yogurt, eggs, egg whites. I only have about two cups here. I need five cups, so we'll be doing it the old-fashioned way and then vanilla. Um, they have banana extract if you wanna add that additionally. And that is it. It says that you can enjoy it with a dollop of Greek yogurt or a squirt of light ready whip if you're not a purist. So we're gonna give it a go and make these up. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can get this oatmeal. from the Vitamix this evening. That is good. I like that. Again, this is 10 cups. Ground down. unlocked my local running community like very local I'm so excited I as you know I've signed up for 
a bunch of 5k races in this winter series and that's almost over and now that I'm in my general area running events I do now know how to find out about so many things that are coming up but my even localer running community does things too and it's more of like running groups and such not so much like 5k races they might get together and do three miles five miles ten miles i'm just excited i am so excited and i'm doing my first walk run with them tomorrow i'm doing a walk run because i am officially over we believe my shin splints that i had in my right shin and my new running coach and I, she did some assessments on me and figured out my right leg is weaker, I guess you could say. Doesn't have the same strength as my left leg and there's just a lot of reasons why I had that weakness on the right side that led to the shin splints. So, we are working on that and now that we have that data, we know again what exercises and what things to improve and since i'm clear to run now for my very first run back she wants me to do a walk run and so it'll be three miles i'll just end up pushing it just a little more to make it an official 5k and it is with the group though and I will walk the first 10 minutes and then I'll have about 10 to 15 minutes of running a minute, walking a minute, running a minute, walking a minute. And I've got an app that'll help me keep track of that. I was trying to get to three cups of egg whites. We're, we're almost there. We're at about two and a half right now. Uh, and then I'll walk, I believe, the last 10 minutes. And if all feels good and clear after that, then next week I'll officially start running. I've had to take a two week break, but I've worked on strength training and stretching with her. And again, these assessments, and she's been showing me how to stretch using a foam roller and on the exercise ball. And it's just been really good. And we're gonna do strength training and find my abs and find my arms. <laughs> it's gonna be, it's great. So I'm excited to walk run with them tomorrow and I'm excited to really get back to running next week and to continue to progress and do those things from there because those activities make my heart happy. So I need to get these cakes done. I will probably go get ready for bed once I get these in the oven and then we'll get them out and I need to get to bed decently because I gotta get up early to do my walk run tomorrow and get back at it. So we're at three cups with this. I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in. And then we have two cups from the store box container of egg whites. And now we have a lot of yolks to go with more eggs for scrambled eggs this weekend. Hey, look, we meal prepped, so that's good. All right. picture it has whole oats sprinkled on the top and I was just making sure it wasn't saying to do that but it doesn't it says to mix it all so that's what we will be a doing I converted 
included my, my baking powder and my baking soda. You just saw me do. I took it from teaspoons to tablespoons. Have this. We now need our Greek yogurt. Our egg whites are in. And vanilla. And our bananas. Thankfully for my little grocery delivery this afternoon, the gentleman picked out some almost ripe bananas along with some green ones. Three cups of Greek yogurt. has finished and is cooling so we will get that into containers also and now we'll put the bananas in. These bananas are pretty firm but we can take a fork to them. Not the first time we've done that today, right? Lots of adventures. I thought I was doing a little bit of freezer cooking last weekend. Now we're gonna circle back and now it's evening. 
and it's still one thing after another. My main camera that I use, I just went to get going, it wasn't working. I had set ground beef out for the rest of these recipes. It's been used. Also, I don't think I got to show you those Bust a Myth banana cakes. I don't know. You're watching this video. I haven't seen an edit yet, but all the food that I made at the start of the video, it's gone. It has been consumed. So let's continue on. I'm feeling like I just, I need a big batch. Like as if we weren't doing a big batch of these payoff day candies. I have in my recipe, I've changed it to a times four batch. Let's just make it times eight. Because last time I made these, they're so delicious. They were gone so quick. And I want some of them. I've never actually had enough of these to freeze. I don't know how that's gonna go. So let's make a big batch of them. Let's make a times eight batch. So if you have your THM starter book, this is on page 163. And if you see any extra weird blurriness happen from this moment out, it's because this is the Canon G7X Mark III that has the autofocus issues, which is why I stopped using it. But that's okay, let's get cooking. All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna times eight everything. So the Gentle Sweet, which we have various home fruit blend, various sweeties from Walmart. That'll be two cups. And so two sticks of butter, one cup of heavy cream. Just making sure you're still there. I've, again, can't, I got just twitchy because camera issues. Okay. And I do not have caramel extract. This was, now it's gonna be six tablespoons. Yes, sorry, I had to look, okay. Salt, and then it'll be six cups of chopped peanuts or other nuts of your choice. And again, these are called payoff day candies from the Trim Healthy Mama Ladies. It says, these are reminiscent of payday candy bars, but in this case, they won't harm your health or your waistline. So let's get making these, and I'm gonna eat some tonight, yay. Okay, so it says, Look here, we'll have to, I think I can do all this in a little precious pot. Um, we're gonna melt our sweetener and our butter, and then we're gonna add the cream, caramel extract, I don't have it. I do, I do have heavy cream though, I know you're proud, um, until it reaches a boil, so I'm trying to get my little flip pad back here where I'm standing. Um, so it says six to eight minutes, and then we're gonna add in the peanut butter, the salt, and the peanuts, and then we stir it, we shape them, just do little little blocks like that and put them on parchment paper and refrigerate them. I do remember the last time we did this. I think we have not, I definitely have not made this since I was in the baby kitchen in this house because I remember then dealing with, I think I had the refrigerator and this was the garage out here. You would pull the pans in and out. We can do it though because we cleaned out this refrigerator a few days ago. Anyway. I really feel like I need some payoff day candies now, so I'm, I'm glad we're starting with this. Well, that's what inspired me. I'm like, it has been an evening. Let's make something sweet. Um, uh, it's like she'll be coming around the mountain. I'll be coming around the kitchen here with the rest of our supplies. Let me just do all this right here. I don't know how many cups are you? Okay, I got, I got two things of peanuts, so we'll have to chop them up. Okay, and got the precious pot set out, but I think, what did I say? cups. It'll be, yeah, about six cups of nuts. So we can definitely, boy, a times eight batch just doesn't seem like enough. <laughs> That's okay though. So two cups of gentle sweet, two sticks of butter. I'll go ahead and get the butter going. Don't get too excited there, flames. Okay. Butter, and then we will pour in our heavy cream. Just gonna keep reading it. If you'd like, you'd like my dish stack there. Okay. I'm down to one dish washer. That's another thing happening, I know. But we're used to two, so focus now. Butter is in. Two cups of sweetener. I have another bag open though. I guess I'll just, well, okay. Do your thing, butter. I think these are. There's two bags of monk fruit, different brands, that's okay. Mm. 
pan this is, a liquid cup, but I won't tell. If you don't, okay. cooking on low heat is for wimps something you tell me in the comments below what is it Christine says she says something and here I am I'm in a wimp but I have proven myself <laughs> to need to cook on low at times okay Even though I just hit you with, there's a whole lot of things going on. It has been, it has been a good week. It has been a good day. I just had some technical difficulties, huh? I do like, if you're doing YouTube, want to ask me about cameras, the G7S Mark II is still used by a lot of YouTubers and, woo, napkin, not washcloth, something. And that's the one I prefer to use. But we'll see. We'll see how the Mark III, you would think the newer one does better than the old models, but I did not find that to be the case. Okay. So, doo -doo -doo. it says add the cream in, allow to gently boil and pour. It reaches the desired crumb of cover. Yeah, I don't have any more. That could be okay. but they have these natural burst. I assume they still have them. And those are kids having fun outside. Um, we got pecan, I got maple. That was one caramel. I have almond in my hand. Oh, that smells it's really good though. We may just go off the rails already. I just shook in some maple extract. Well, maple burst. It's more of a flavor. It smelled good. It smelled nice. I don't know if that's going to be enough, though. To smell it again and remind myself. Okay. Well, goodness. I just put the rest in the bottle. That's fine. That is empty, too. Okay. Well, let's clean out my cabinet with me, right? I have that ground beef coming. I was hoping to at least do, I'm gonna also do the Philly cheesesteak casseroles. I've done those over here over the years too, but I was hoping to do two for now, two for the freezer. We won't eat, it's nine by 13 pans. I, we wouldn't eat two nine by 13s tonight, but I think we would definitely eat one. And then we would have the other one for tomorrow, like lunches, lunch options or whatever. And then put two in the freezer. That might happen, but if I'm not wearing this dress when I make it, just know it didn't happen tonight. We will get these candies done. Okay. So that is doing its thing. Okay, so I'm gonna not burn this. That's gonna go well. And we need to 
chop up. I'm thinking I should have just ordered chopped peanuts. Okay, take the lid off the peanut butter. So this is Crazy Richard's 100% peanuts, creamy peanut butter. Pretty sure it's sugar free. That's the whole reason I got it. Yeah, it's just peanuts in it. But these kind of natural peanut butters need stirred. I'm just tidying up for a minute. It's so nice. It's staying lighter longer. It's 615. Look at that. It's not pitch black outside. That means there is hope in the world and things are going well. Okay. So I'll move this over here. Oh, there's my ground beef. My ground beef just came from Walmart. Yay. Okay. Things are happening here. It was boiling. Now I'm messing with it. I've not been looking at my time though. The book was saying six to eight minutes. All right, super easy recipe. I'm just gonna chop these peanuts and then we add the peanuts, the salt, and the peanut butter to our pot once we take it off heat there and we stir it up and put the little plums on the parchment paper so this was a good win <laughs> for me to start with this evening um, I'm, I just won't end up cutting all of these and even in the picture this is full nuts in this picture here yeah okay chopped nuts or other nuts of your choice so my choice is I'm not chopping no nuts okay okay executive decision I'm like, wait a minute, I don't, I don't remember doing this before. I think before I thought the same thing. Wait a minute, there are full nuts in this picture and I did not get chopped nuts, so why chop all of these? I'm good with that, I'm good with that. But I do remember it's being super delicious last time. Okay. Good, happy, I'm happy, I'm glad. The knife will just go up, another recipe. The ground beef is here. We will at least get dinner made fresh tonight and have some dinners for the freezer. Okay, I think I will just put my pot right here. I'll move my camera down for you guys to see it better. Eyeballing six tablespoons. How many plops, huh? I'm, I'm measuring the peanut butter with my heart. Okay, okay. That's, that's how we're doing our how we're doing this right now. Okay. Probably eight tablespoons or so. How do I get my peanut butter off this spoon now? Because this is hot. Yay, wooden spoon to the rescue. Okay, and I am also eyeballing the salt. The original recipe was like two to three pinches, so there we go. Now, well, let me move my camera back. There you go. I got the lid off of this container of peanuts, and then we'll need about half the other one. Okay, I think that'll work. Let's stir this though. Yes, mmm, smells good. See, this is like my love language in a pot. I don't know. <laughs> Peanut butter in all its forms. 
we we're gonna do this other other half of thing there, peanuts too. Okay, now we'll get this next batch. Oh, I was like, uh oh, this is already open. This is my children. These peanuts have sat on the counter all week in preparation for any day. I kept saying I was gonna get back to my filming, I'd actually be able to. And the other day someone did have a few peanuts and I was like, oh wait, 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 I'm making something with those. You know, get one of the two big open bags of pistachios <laughs> instead. Okay. Oh, nice, nice, nice. It smells good. Okay, now time for the parchment paper. Oh, also, I was like trying to remember everything that happened in the week and I'm looking up and I'm seeing the nausea medicine. We had a stomach virus come through also. Yes, okay, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking through all my life decisions and <laughs> how I got here a week later. All right, so I'm gonna get some sheet pan out. Now we're gonna get dropping <laughs> these peanut mounds, yum. And I know the last couple times, I have, I did make this maybe three or four times before. Like I said, it's been a while. We've got talking hand, no head, right? And I remember whenever I put on the parchment paper, it would just be like, oh yeah, I hope this sets up, but it does. They do, they do. How many sheet pans will we fill? These look very pretty though, look at them. They're setting up already. I'd put them in the fridge, but I wanna get a video shot of all of them lined up. But this is what we have left. We're gonna keep on filling our pans. So, let's push these down. We will get that other new roll of parchment paper out. Oh, it's under that tortilla press, oh my. Remember last summer before my life blew up 
And I got that tortilla press because I was going to use that for homemade tortillas. Maybe we'll get back to that at some point this century. I don't know. Maybe not. Walmart also sells tortillas. anybody in a video. I'm trying to remember if we cut them or just broke off the pieces. I mean, I was just making it for that moment. This would be a delicious pan to scrape. Okay. Try to fit some. It's not like these will expand, so I'm going to Victorious! Look at us. We made food. I mean, I know I could have kept filming and not told you all that. Oh, by the way, I haven't filmed in seven days, but <laughs> just helps explain why I'm getting warmed up again. So we will get the the these. We will get these in the refrigerator, and then we will get cooking the ground beef, and we will do the four Philly cheese steak casseroles, and then we will come back and keep on trucking. Maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, but get this. Big cooking time going and done.
refrigerator that can go. My little traces of iced coffee I don't like to let go of. Okay, some random eggs. Too many coffee creamers, those need to be downstairs in one of those refrigerators. All right, we got lots of room in here though, so that's good. one big pan. Technically it's supposed to be eight pounds. I've got nine pounds of ground beef here. So we're going to get that cooking. And hey, I'm not cooking it from frozen. Who am I? That's interesting. I feel like three quarters of the time I'm cooking it from ground beef from frozen. I have all that other meat. like and probably is an obscene amount of cream cheese and we'll cook all that through then we mix it in our pans top with provolone and at that point I have frozen it many many times it's great to have all prepped up and on hand in the freezer ready to go like I said we're gonna cook two pans tonight you can tell like some of this meat is older than the other that's okay happy thoughts happy thoughts and already I'm like oh two pans, I guess we're going to find out. Okay, we'll be okay.
small one. Small one. This meat was 80-20. Super greasy. Super greasy. And I used to buy 70-30 meat. I mean, you can drain it all out, but I'm used to all that ground beef that I had from J and Oak and Farm. I definitely need some more for that. Let's see. I don't think I should help this. My brain is telling me to. It's not going under here. It's gonna be good. It's good. It's good. I'm not flipping it on my dress. It'll be good. Okay. I think before I'm like, how did I do this? Before I brought my bowl up to the stove. That's what I put to the stove right here. Oh well, I'm already over here. So I got two big peppers chopped. I think I did, no, I did four big peppers and two onions. And this is an extra pound of ground beef, but between four nine by 13 pans, I guess each pan is two and a quarter pounds, so that, that's fine. that I get a wireless microphone. So I'm not yelling in this big kitchen. And I ordered one, or I think it's actually two, and there's a charger. It's just gonna be a different routine with it. And I'm scared. And the reason I'm scared is because all this filming takes so much work. And what if I put a couple hours into filming, like one evening, like this time, and then my fear is losing the footage. If I have audio files, video files, and then we sync them, if there's any trouble, I guess it would make sense. I need more time in my life. It would make more sense to do some, some testing, right? Yeah. So, I at least got them. We have that. My next step should be I should take them out of the box and get them charged. And then I can look at them. We'll see if we can add that into our life. That would be amazing. A 2024 goal, right? And it's now March. You can probably tell, I think a week ago, when I started filming, those were fresh. Anyway, maybe, yeah, I think those are actually from Lily's birthday. So that's about two weeks. The flowers there. So, we are moving right along though. are going to see me. I'm just going to pour this grease in here too. Oh, I miss splattering my dress. It was good. Good, 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 good. Okay. So, I'm going to do the onions and peppers in here now. Alrighty. Yay. From various teen cooking, I had to Totally take the stove out and clean it today before I got started. So the stove is fresh. And you can obviously use different colored peppers if you would like, but red is what my Walmart had.
Look at that. If you are a peanut butter person. Mm. My kids don't know yet. I mean, they probably, these should probably be in the fridge another hour, but so good. So good. Okay. I'm going to look at something here. Okay. Four packages of cream cheese. And you get to watch me eat peanuts while I do it. Right here, don't be scared. We are adding in our four blocks of cream cheese. I'm going to, we're gonna stir those up and break them down and let them cook along with the meat. And it'll be absolutely creamy and delicious when we're done. And it looks a little scary, but you just have to keep on stirring and mashing it down. And the pan is heating up and we are going to cook them through. I'm also adding in our different seasonings at this point. And we will blend it all together as it is heating through again. This is a recipe I have over on my blog though, and it goes along with these meals. I've always eaten it with the little Dream Healthy Mama Lady meals. And so I consider this an S meal. If they're doing it proper, they probably use less cream cheese. Could be, I don't know. Tastes delicious to me. I call it an S meal. You call it what you want, right? low carb, you could also call it keto. What do they say? Just don't call me late for dinner, right? And if you 
you wanted to stretch this, you could put some collard rice in it too. I've never tried that, but I just thought, oh, you could stretch this recipe even more. So try that sometime. borrow from a pan. need to come out of the oven but they are delicious and here we go we've got five containers of these payoff day candies and I don't know friends <laughs> that was the times eight batch mm hmm we need to do a times 16 batch for real they are so good yes yes and amen right
together. I think, I think I know what we're pulling together. So I had to go downstairs, do some grocery shopping in the grocery store in my basement, get some supplies, get some okra. That's right, the okra is coming out tonight. So I'm planning to do the Trim Healthy Mama Trim Train Soup. I'm gonna give you the page number that that is on. And then also I'm switching out. I was gonna do the broccoli and cheese soup. I'm going to do the chili instead. That's in this book and there are a lot of THM chili variations on mine. And then I think I'm gonna go for gold and try to do that, I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it the wrong thing. Okay, let's go to the page. Yeah, it's a Cinnabon cake, okay. And I will show you this is delicious. And I was going to make this the other week and I had an issue with not having the sugar-free almond milk. I have words, I know I do, and we're going to find them and we're going to do these three recipes in big batch. Let's get going. And their trim train soup, it is, it's a taco soup. It's on page 125. And if you're following along with THM, like if you're trying to eat THM meals, uh, you can do it as a fuel pool, an S meal, or an E meal. There's options to do that. You would switch out to make it an E meal, make sure it's a leaner meat. I'm gonna do mine as an S meal. So it's going to not be a leaner meat, it's just gonna be some ground beef. And y'all know I had a ground beef saga the other day, but I have some of my quickly ordered ground beef. I do need to multiply these recipes, but let's get going. And look at this, our little crocuses. I think that's what these are, or they're those little miniature lilies. Irises, that's what I'm looking for. I think these are mini irises. Anyway, they're beautiful. Spring is spring is a spring in here in Virginia. All right, so I brought up my red Dutch oven. There we go. Sorry, things not shown on video. I just had another phone call, and that took I don't know if that was 30 minutes or not. But anyway, we are doing things now. I had been soaking earlier. I also finally poured out those flowers that needed to go be with Jesus. So I figured I was gonna need this nice best oven for this food. I might even do the chili in here. Okay. I like having stock pot options. book on page 114 is uh, they have one and a half pounds of meat and I didn't do an exact times five I have my adaptation is five pounds they had half a large onion I did two um, so you know eyeballing things how we do I do need to get some beans up here though so just need to do some ground beef analyzation I feel like that's the story of my life I have 
probably 14 pounds of ground beef. I have 10 in the fridge. No, it's actually nine. And then I did find these in one of my freezers because I had a teenager look for me. So I went and looked for myself. These are, well, it's about four pounds total. So 13 pounds of ground beef. Like a normal person, right? So we need it for this chili and the trim train soup. And I think the soup probably only needs about five. We'll get, we'll get into the math. Let me, let me see here. Just because chili is so popular around these here parts and it has been a while, I'm wondering if I want to do like 10 pounds of meat, like a substantially larger amount of chili. So I have some to freeze. Okay, so the trim train soup starts off with two pounds of ground beef, whether it's beef, turkey, chicken, or venison. So times five would be 10 pounds. Decide which way I want to go here. So we'll, 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 we'll keep moving, keep moving, we'll figure it out. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is just divide the meat that I have down. Um, and that will be, okay, divide, divide it in half. That's what I'm trying to say here. We're just gonna divide it in half. I'm gonna put half in the chili, half in the trim train soup, and it may go off the rails a bit per our usual, and that's what we do. So, yeah, I, think that, I think that'll work. Those were beautiful, and also I've had so many trees down around the house because they were falling down around us. And remember, I had the tree come through the roof. Okay, all the good times, <laughs> all the memories. Anyway, I will now also have a decent amount of sun on my flower beds around the house. Where before I have done sun bulb, I've done bulbs. They've done fine on this side of the house and behind it, but front of the house. I'm sorry. This is now a garden update video front of the house has been, you know, heavy hostess and such, and so now I'm going to be able to do lilies and other bulbs that should be kind to us. It's going to be all dahlias. I do think the Costco dahlia section better buckle up because we're coming for it. Do they have the dahlias there yet? Let me know in the comments below. Yeah, I'm excited. So for sure dahlias, African marigolds, I think I got this from MI Gardener or Baker Creek last year, um, and I have a lot of things coming up. And then in the garden from last year, I should have some interesting volunteers. And I did all those sunflowers. So see, I just feel like there's so many flower things to focus on. And that just really makes sense for what my 2024 year is. I'm just gonna focus on flowers. <laughs> so dahlias, sunflowers, African marigolds. Of course, I've always loved all the lilies and the irises. My irises that came up behind the house last year were beautiful. So. The garden plants. I got into that because we washed the mason jar. Now we're gonna make chili. 
And so their recipe here, this is called Pearl's Chili. Again, on page 114. It's got ground beef, onion, they've got diced tomatoes. They have Rotel style with chilies. I don't think I brought any up like that. But I brought a lot of diced tomatoes, tomato sauce. I have a giant can. We got a sharp shopper that needed to be used. It's been, in, been up here in the cabinet. We do need to put some beans in, and I need to go get, oh, send send one of my people. Uh, water, salt, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder to taste, and then some liquid amino. So it's a very easy, very, I mean, chili's easy anyway, but this just feels very simple, which we like. So wait, they have other ideas here in the book as well. And I'm going to, besides jacking up my quantities, keep it simple and just obey them. So let me get back to this ground beef here for a minute. Stir that up. I haven't used this pot in a while, so I kind of forget my tricks. Forget my tricks with lifting the lid and setting it aside. It has been downstairs. I'm glad to have it back up here now. I have different pots that I get using up here and then I'll send one downstairs. So this pot I haven't used in a few weeks, but maybe we're gonna do the trim trim soon enough. I'm not sure. I feel like I need a big pot for that too. Okay, this needs a few more minutes. So we will start opening tomato sauce cans get those ready and try to not overflow the pot. I forget how many quarts this one is. Okay, let's try a can opener. 
break out this one. No, how many can openers have we gone through on this channel over the past decade, huh? We've seen them all. The only thing I don't like is it just did a lot of little metal shards. That's not good. Let me wipe those off. Like, where's my cloth? I only have one out right now. We will wipe them off because I don't want those getting in food accidentally. Operating. Even though always with these big cans, it's it's a thing, huh? Okay. So dangerous. Just don't watch for a minute. I had someone leave a message last time. Jay Morrell, if you do that with your cans, that's how you can cut your finger. And yes, I have a scar on my finger from a can, but I've done pretty well. It was only one time. I think I was, you know, by the ages of my children. Um, I was in nursing school. You know my timeline. I had a two-year-old. I had a newborn. I guess my two-year-old was three. Anyway, I cut my finger really well there. Did a fantastic job. And that was on a can of corn making chili. So chili just follows me through the decades. And this, where it looks like we're making some of the chili. You think so? And then I'm thinking I could add some more diced tomatoes to this. not go too crazy before I can go too crazy here. Drain the beans in this big tomato sauce can, although I'll have to hold it and that's no fun. I like to, usually I like to pop these tops when we have to pop tops and uh, just let them sit in my sink for a minute. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Anyway, so I went down, I've got Two things of black beans. I think they said choose any kind of beans you want. I've got some northern beans and some navy beans. So I always like putting a variety of beans in the chili. This is what I grabbed. evening goes on I feel myself I'm tired it's been a long day so we'll just continue this video every day until it's done I don't have a lot of room for the water, ha ha. 
and mineral salt, chili powder, onion powder, garlic powder. Some favorite friends. And then also liquid amino. Come on, Tim. One, one side can show you. Let's not fight. Let's not fight. chili to my chili. Yeah. A lot of times when I cook chili, I add chili to it. Okay. A lot of times when I cook chili, I will add corn to it. I'm not doing that with this. And sometimes I've even added rice to it to stretch it. And then I usually add peppers to it. Sometimes I put sausage in it. And lots of, lots of different ways I like to do it. But we are following the book, but expanding it mightily. <laughs>
All right. It's very good. I already had some bites of it. I'm having some of these Quest uh, tortilla style protein chips. It's kind of like a protein Dorito. I'm going to eat this while I eat this chili. My kiddos, we have bags of tortilla chips over there. So I imagine they're gonna have tortilla chips and chili. And some of them will put sour cream on it. Actually, I have some Greek yogurt, I might do that too. We're good, we've done, we've done did it. So, Jamrel, how do you do these big cooking days? Well, I think my most recent big batch cooking videos and freezer cooking videos show, I pick away, continue to pick away at it, and you know I have days where I'm like, I'll get three done, and I only get one done. And we just show back up the next day and do what we can get done. So, I'm tired, but in a few seconds, it's gonna be another day, hopefully in the sunshine. And we're gonna do those last two recipes. And it's gonna be good. So this is fantastic. Go make it from your starter book. Mm-hmm. All those spices turned out just fine. Like, that was good. We did it. How many tables? I think I did four. <laughs> what did we use? We shook cumin aggressively. It was four tablespoons of, let me turn my heat off now too, of um, chili powder, two tablespoons of garlic powder, two tablespoons of onion powder, and pepper and redmond salt. Variety of beans, six and a half, seven pounds of meat. Um, the tomato sauce, diced tomatoes. I think this is a 16 quart Dutch oven. I'm tired. I'm gonna eat. Okay, see you in a few seconds for more cooking. Well, friends, it's time to finally do that trim train soup. And what did we say it was the other day? The cinnamon cake. We are doing those last two big batch recipes today. Oh yes, we are. It's exciting. So let's get going on the trim, trim train soup before we don't. And then we need to get what is left of the chili in containers for the freezer as well and do all the things. Let's go. Alrighty. Trim train soup, where are you? Okay, so two pounds of ground beef and we already decided the other day that we were just not listening to that. You're multiplying it times five, aren't we? Okay. And it feels like spring has sprung in Virginia. It's so nice out. Oh, I've got sins going on in this cabinet below. I hear, I hear things are not well. Oh, well. Okay. 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 We'll just pretend like there's no problems there right now. Way. The weather is nice this morning. You know, I've been easing back into running. I have not been doing a 5K every day or 10K three days in a row. I've been listening to my running coach and being paved and healing my body. So this morning I did her program, added some extra walking to it, which is all fine because my body was saying yes, I could. So I am going to cut this ground beef and pay attention, right? I walked two miles. And then I ran two miles and then I walked a mile. And within all that, I did, she has in this little app that we use to communicate, and I do see her in her office um, usually two times a week also, but she has this like five minute pre run, which is really before the two mile walk stretching routine. And then after everything, there's a 15 minute stretching routine. So I did all of that. And tomorrow is my official next 5K big group race. That'll be with several hundred folks, so that will be fun. And I do plan to run that whole thing, and that'll be a whole lot of fun. And then I think, I think I'm back at it officially. And as always, we got a couple different things going on here. I have about 12, 13 pounds of sweet potatoes. One might go funky in that bag. We're gonna prep these, you know, forever prepping sweet potatoes. Let's see here. Scissors. And I'm just gonna throw these in the slow cooker. They'll be ready in a couple hours. You can also do the instant pot, but I don't need them right now. I would like them 
for my sweet potato folks to see me. This has a few questionable ones in it, so it might only have several. Let's see. Well, I almost missed that bag. Okay, let's see. It's not good or okay. All right, so this might only be like eight pounds then. All right, and I've got a little bit stool. Short girl problems. I need a stool when I need it, but let's put it over there. I have all those dirt and potatoes in there. Okay, I think I wiped over here. You know, my life is just continuing to wipe the countertops, right? beef is done here. I just had it on low for a few more minutes. See if we can have a grease fire. Ha ha. And I worked on getting our other ingredients ready. So we've got some diced tomatoes with green chilies. Just some regular old diced tomatoes. It called for some chicken broth. I don't have any more canned for real. So there you go. Great value chicken broth. We've got some salt, garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, cumin. It also called for liquid smoke. I don't I don't have any that I can find right now. And then hot sauce, it says like Texas Pete's or such. We have some Frank's Red Hot. So it also has listed frozen cauliflower and then cue the okra, frozen okra, and some other ingredients from there. So we have, so we've browned our meat. Oh, another thing it calls for is veggie blend, which is, which is usually onions, peppers, and sometimes celery. I don't have any of that chopped yet. So need to chop that and I guess I'll drain this meat and then we'll saute those in there. We do what we want, right? Then we're gonna add all of that to a pot. They have this already in the pot, but we'll end up there. Then let's see here, uh, tomatoes, and then we're supposed to put the cauliflower and then we're supposed to put the cauliflower and some boiling water in the blender, okay, to, add, to make a creamed cauliflower. All right, we can do this. Then we're supposed to put the frozen okra through the blender and add that to the soup. So we're working through it. For our usual, I'm just going to Frozen veggie blend in your Walmart, or I know I've seen it at Sharp Shopper. 
these are the situations where it's really nice to have in the freezer because then you don't have to chop nothing. Someone else did it for you and you are ready to go. That is okay. The caffeine is strong with this one. And we'll just get a little chop and action going on. Do you need to go back to my local farm, Jane O'Brien Farm, and get some local farm raised meat? Because you know, when I have that, we don't even have to drain it. There's like no grease on it. It's not too bad. Okay. Alrighty. So, I'll just let this drain for a few minutes. And my other little funny thing is so. When I had ordered my cauliflower from my local grocery, Walmart grocery pickup, they replaced it with the broccoli cauliflower blend. So we are also gonna stand here for a few minutes and pick the cauliflower out of it. I mean, honestly, you know, we could probably just go ahead and throw the broccoli in too, but we won't because we're trying to be mostly behaved and I've never actually put broccoli in this, but I'm just thinking, well, if we blend it up, I mean, it's kind of just like the okra. But anyway, I'm gonna pick these pieces out and then, we will repackage the broccoli. Sounds a little tedious, but we'll try to do it real quick. Alrighty, so, some extra bowls, got a bag. We're making lemonade with our lemons, right? Washing the scissors. I don't know, how will this go? These aren't huge bags. We can do it. Tell myself that. Dump them and then start picking. Hmm. You have to have flour. Okay. So I've set my timer. I bet this will only take us two minutes. You tell me in the comments if you would have just blended up the cauliflower. I mean, no, don't tell me that. The uh, broccoli. Honestly, I've got so many folks that love broccoli. Maybe I will steam up the broccoli separate. Let's have that ready. We'll have that and sweet potatoes. The trim tray soup, myself and probably three other people, so four total, will get the containers and eat that. I Last time I... Um, I have made trim tray soup and frozen it several times, and I usually just freeze that in the gallon freezer bags, and then I will set a bag out to defrost in my refrigerator, and then just dump it in the slow cooker, maybe the next morning or next afternoon, and those, the four of us who lack the trim train soup, not that the others don't like it, they just don't care. <laughs> so, anyway, those of us that will eat it, it'll just be in the slow cooker, and we can, you know, make something additional to go with it, or just have two bowls or whatever of that. I have some very exciting news, and I'm so excited. I cannot wait to tell you. I want to tell you now, but it's going to be in the cooking video, okay? And I hear an airplane going by. Please don't land in my yard. Anyway, I am on that. Besides running this morning, I'm on the exciting news endorphin high. Thank you, exciting news. We have to get our endorphins where we can, right? They are my favorite and dopamine. I like that too. <laughs> so anyway, be watching my videos because you are going to be so excited when you see it. So, okay, okay, not there yet. Oh, this is not a lot of cauliflower. Well, you know, I looked at, I have rice cauliflower and I thought, well, if I'm putting it through the blender with hot water, I could probably just use that too. Uh, I'm trying not to totally adapt too many things. Okay, not really a lot of cauliflower there. I feel like this is more broccoli and broccoli ends. Well, that could, that could be. Maybe I'll throw some of these little mystery squares that are probably broccoli in here. Instead of bagging this up 
I'm going to cook this because even we've got lots of broccoli fans and my toddler is, I mean, when I eat things with broccoli, <laughs> he eats all my broccoli. So you know that at Sharp Shopper, I get those bags of the rice and quinoa Mediterranean blend. And I'll usually have that with like, I'll throw some extra chicken and broccoli on top. And when he sees me eating that, like the broccoli is gone. So I have, I have my broccoli fans and everyone else has broccoli. So, okay, save the bags. Meat is draining. Water boiling, okay. All righty. And then I need to do some kind of veggie blend. So I have some questionable, questionable here, celery. We're gonna get that chopped up. And I did not have peppers. Um, Oh, I might actually have one pepper. And then I have an onion. This is just me making that, looking at it again. Okay, let me get, let me at least get this in there. celery throw you off if you if we look at our starter book on page 41 they have a page called your smart grocery guide it talks about essentials to have for your THM home cooking and I have had several of you message me and want to know if you need to purchase the special ingredients over at the trim healthy mama shop in order to do the plan or basically what what do you need to get started so what I have told so many of you is you just need to get to Walmart. In all honesty, the protein powder is wonderful. I buy bags and bags of the baking blend at a time, and I want to start getting my sweeteners from them because these bags of monk fruit and such that I'm getting from Walmart are 10 to $15 a bag. I would much rather support a small family-owned business like the Trim Healthy Mama Shop than give more money to Walmart. I already give a lot of money to Walmart. So anyway, I want to start getting my sweeteners through them as well. I have ordered their sweeteners before, but I'm just not as consistent with it because um, I use a lot and I need to stock up. All that to say, they give a list of things that you need. And so frozen rice cauliflower and just whole cauliflower, frozen veggie blend, um, and they say that's a mixture of diced onions, peppers, and celery. And again, I, I didn't get my pepper out of the fridge. I do have one red pepper. I'm failing at this, but that's okay. We have the onions and um, we have the celery. Frozen okra. <laughs> like how many times do you have okra? Okra is in a lot of things. Some of you have asked me if you have to like okra, okra, if you have to use it. I don't always have it. It is not, I just said it's in a lot of things. It is not in every recipe. But I have mentioned there are some smoothie recipes where you blend, blend it up. The meatloaf, you blend it up. Um, in this recipe, we're gonna blend it up. So I just slip okra, okra into some things and you can use it or not. Um, and then they have two pages, pages 42 and 43, and probably, yeah, 44 of basics. Things like eggs, egg whites, fresh and frozen meats, breakfast meats, deli meats, sour cream, butter, 0% Greek yogurt, sweet potatoes, one third fat cream cheese, light laughing cow. I mean, have you ever seen anyone buy <laughs> tons of light laughing cow cheese? Yes, uh-huh. So just very basic things, canned tuna, apple cider vinegar, all fruit jelly, old fashioned oats, quinoa, brown rice, 
sprouted whole grain bread, light rye wasa crackers. Now the light rye wasa crackers, I order by the case on Amazon. I can't get the light rye ones at my local Walmart. You can get wasa crackers, but they don't check the box on being the light rye. Low carb tortillas, sugar-free pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce, unsweetened cocoa powder. I'm not reading the whole list, but it's basic items. Baked corn chips, at least 85% chocolate, stevia, sparkling water, the list goes on. So all of those items you can get at Walmart. Again, the items that I order from their company are just extra nice to have things. And now I'm thinking, I think I wanna make me one of those cookies and cream protein shakes that I like having from them. And I just brought up some unsweetened almond milk also, which will help me make that possible. Alrighty, so, my things out of the way here. The directions say, doo -doo -doo -doo, put frozen cauliflower in the blender and half a boiling water. It had said to boil seven cups just off the boil water. But again, we're already on our own crazy train here. Justin, I just thought I'm gonna watch out for people walking in. Um, but we're already, but we're already doing our own thing here. So I'm eyeballing it. I'm gonna put the water and some broccoli, kind of limp it along, not broccoli, cauliflower. And then what does it say about the okra? And then the rest of the okra and the boiling water. Oh, and coconut oil. Okay, so we're gonna focus, focus here on And my Vitamix did come back to life last time. I had my last video. I wasn't so sure, but it had put that cauliflower inversion. Um, when the motor gets hot, it just turns off for a little bit. But so far, I think I've had this three years. It always comes back to life. That's probably, we'll see. Is it too full or not? It will let us know. cauliflower science experiment. We're going to now do that with the okra also. And I'm going to go ahead and put our homemade veggie blend in here. Add the hamburger. I guess we we'll just get some of these components in the pot. I think, whoop, I think we have a okay enough size stock pot, I wonder. Well, a stock pot will let us know. I just started using this one. This is that one from Ikea. I would use the red one, but I still have a little bit of chili in that that we're gonna freeze. So we'll see. We won't tell the stock pot. The stock pot will tell us. And right now, I am unsure how it's gonna go. There we go.
they had said about the coconut oil. Do, do, do. Get some more coconut oil. Oops. Unfortunately, my floor got some coconut oil. one of the packs of our payoff day cookies that is left. I mean, they're disappearing fast. We have some afternoon Minecraft Legos going down. judging this meal on how it looks right now. This looks amazing though, doesn't it? <laughs> looks like a science experiment. It's good though, it's good. Stick with me. myself I was like oh this stock pot can hold it and now I'm like eh, back and forth back and forth but again it's already dirty so I'm just gonna keep on keep on keeping on with layering stuff in it and if we have to escape into a bigger pot we know where to find one so again this is called trim train taco soup Oprah science and the longer you can let it simmer the more that that foam goes down and I'm also just letting all those flavors blend together it also said in the book that the way that the recipe is written or the way I've mega multiplied it is a mild flavor and that of course to taste test it and add more spices to it if you'd like just depending on your personal preference and so I am just coming back to visit this pot and I've stirred it several times that I haven't even filmed. The broccoli that I was also prepping is done. I need to drain that, get some butter on it, and that'll just be some evening toddler and kiddo broccoli, whoever needs it. There, I'm sure there'll be someone who will like some broccoli. And then we are gonna work on this Cinnabon cake. It says in the starter book that that is adapted from basically some on-plan cinnamon buns. But this is a cake form where you just do it all in 9 by 13 pans. I had adapted the recipe to do two 9 by 13 pans. We're gonna double that 
and do four. And my plan is that I will save two out for this weekend. We'll do the sugar-free icing for, and then the other two without the icing, I'm going to freeze. And then whenever I need those, I'll whip up the icing to put on those defrosted cakes. When I need them, they'll be in the freezer. Here's how our very nice full pot of the Trim Train taco soup is cooking up. And they have in the picture, you can have this with some shredded cheese on top or some of that 0% fat Greek yogurt. Just depends on what kind of meal you are making it. Alrighty, so here's what we're going for. And this is the cake cut in squares. This is a whole egg stash that was found from our one hen <laughs> that we currently have. So she's been busy, but I'm a little twitchy because it's a big egg stash. And sometimes when you find them, you that's fine, honey. Someone is cutting a gluten-free pizza off camera. So if you're hearing crunching, they just looked at me with big eyes. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. So if you hear the crunching, that's not related to the eggs. Okay. So back to the eggs. When I have, you know, in my chicken, extensive chicken experience, Sometimes when you find a big stash, you just, you get some surprises. So I am going to, look at this wisdom, I'm going to crack my eggs in a separate cup. I was gonna say in a separate bowl, in a separate cup. And we'll go from there and hopefully everything goes well. And yes, my kiddo just reminded me, they're not fertile because we don't have a rooster, that's true. But I'm just worried because our weather's kind of fluctuated. I don't think they would have frozen, but for one chicken, this is, maybe three weeks worth of eggs, should be fine. I've just seen things, you know? Life on a farm, life on a prevent, prevent farm, you see things. So, just wanna be extra sure. Okay. So, original recipe for one cake is two eggs. We're going for eight. I don't know why I have that extra bowl. I guess I don't really need it. I'm gonna put the shells in it, okay? That this egg is clear, yay. You're gonna hear my dogs extra loud right now because the kitchen was getting hot, so I opened up my front door and my back door because we had a pizza going. We had, a, we, the stock pot is still going. Would you go over, honey, and turn that stock pot off for me? Uh, the broccoli was going. It's like how many, you know, how many things we get going? And I didn't have the fan on because I was talking to you guys and I have, heated things up in here and it feels really nice outside so yep we only have one chicken I did want to get a few more chickens go in this spring we shall see though but I have raised chickens for as always I think the ages of my children I think Naomi was three when I got my first chickens and she's 17, makes my brain hurt, 14 years or so. So anyway, we've raised lots of flocks and we will do it again. But we do have one lone chicken. She's a good girl. What did we end up naming her? Iris. Iris, Iris, okay. Let me get my washcloth. Okay, so those eight did just fine. Now, I need egg whites. I need about two and a half cups, so. Things should go up here. And then I will just cook these yolks up at some point this weekend. My might even do it tonight. Like, hey, look. Again, the toddler would eat egg yolks and broccoli. Won't go to waste. Okay, so I have our bowl of eggs with ooh, just the yolks. I have our egg whites here. Again, I'll cook those eggs, egg whites up toddler will not mind at all or I mean any any person in this house will not mind but you just know who will gravitate towards certain things quickly okay okay so now we're gonna add unsweetened almond milk and I've got that at 
about two and a half cups. This again is the wonderful baking blend that I get. I order from Trim Healthy Naturals and it says, let's see here. Oh, yes, it's gluten-free. Does contain almond and coconut and gluten-free, GMO-free, muffins, biscuits, pancake waffles, all kinds of things that you can make with it. doing this in two separate bowls and adding it together. But honestly, their recipe just says mix all the cake batter ingredients together and pour into the pan. So that's my kind of recipe right there.
so there is plenty of cinnamon mixture to plop around. I was being gentle with it and I was measuring, but now we will eyeball. I think there's plenty for me to go over these a couple times here. all over. There, there we go. That's what our directions say. Plop your cinnamon swirl all over. And again, this is cinnamon and the sweetener and butter. I'm just going to use the, I had a fork, I'm use a fork or a spoon to kind of swirl it in, but it said not to mix it all the way. salt and pepper, cooked them in butter, and I had two who had some scrambled eggs, and I had a couple that had some of this broccoli that we went ahead and prepped also. I like to have lots of little leftover options. done yet but they are cooking up beautifully in there and the sweet potatoes were done from earlier plug those I had turned them off and then over here we have our icing our delicious 
sugar-free frosting for the Cinnabon cake. And this will be enough for two of them to cut into squares. And again, prepping these for the weekend. I will have several folks who enjoy this. Plus it is gluten-free for my gluten-free folks. And then I plan to freeze two of them without the icing, but I can do this when I pull those out. And now I'm going to label up some bags and get what is left of the chili bagged up. And so I'm using my bag stand holder, my, yes, that is what it's called, the stand holder for the bag. And I am just ladling the chili into those bags. And again, I will set those whenever I want to serve chili but not make a big pot. I will set out a frozen gallon bag from the freezer into the refrigerator. And then later when it defrost, I will just heat it through on a pot on the stove. Or usually I do, I do these soups in the slow cooker and then do sandwiches or baked potatoes or something else to go with it. But it is, has, they've definitely come to save my life every time I have needed them. And that's how things are looking. And I'm still using that big canning ladle that I got, I believe, at my local hardware store. And it is just very nice to scoop up big batches. And I am going to get that bag in the holder. <laughs> yes, I am. And we are going to ladle it from there. And then I will get those to freeze on a sheet pan in the freezer and then once they're frozen I will take them off of the sheet pan and they can just sit stacked on the racks but freezing them on a sheet pan first helps them freeze with the back flat and not freezing into the racks in the freezer which is never fun. And so now I am putting the trim train taco soup into these soup containers that I got on Amazon. I will try to make you proud and have my Amazon sh shop linked below. It is amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash jmorell. And let's see if I can get those soup containers in there. But I did find them on Amazon. And the big batch of soup containers I had back at the Forest House, I also got on Amazon. And so I am filling these up now. And I also had enough chili to fill one with that. And so I will just put them in the freezer in these containers. And again, I will set them out to defrost and they don't even have to be reheated in this container. Once it's defrosted, you can just pour it into a bowl and microwave it from there. But the work is done making the big stock pot full of soup. So that is good. And all of that soul blended out okra ended up cooking down and turning out fantastic. You don't even know it's in there, but the Trim Healthy Mama sisters will be proud of us for blending that soul out of the okra. And now I am enjoying that Cinnabon cake. Oh yes, I am. I'm having my sample piece and I'm going to have a second one. It is so good. And let me tell you, from the future, whenever I put the icing on top of both of those two 9 by 13 Cinnabon cakes, which is what I'm doing here now, put the icing on it. Of course, we ate some that night. But the next morning, when several of us went to have this cake for breakfast, because it's that delicious and it's good for you, um, it was just an extra level of fantastic goodness with the icing soaking in in it overnight. And then honestly, for the next several days as we ate it down, I just, I ate it cold. It was good, warm through. Yes, see, I'm having no problem eating that and shoving that in my face fresh the night I made it, but it was just extra special cold with the icing down all down all through it down in its pores <laughs> it was great and the next morning whenever I had my big 5k race I took two pieces of that and I ate it I had about a 45 minute to an hour drive there and back and so that was my breakfast that I ate on the way there and I did not mind and it was just I tell you it was extra extra special the following day so very good and so now I'm continuing to shove that Cinnabon cake in my face and get the lids on the soup containers there. Now the other two Cinnabon cakes that I made, I did not ice and I'm going to freeze them and I will make fresh icing. I will honestly not defrost one at a time. I will set both of them out and I'll probably give myself a week or so off of it and then we're going to go at it again. They were just so good. Even my youngest, like my three-year-old and my six-year-old and my nine-year-old, they just, everybody loved it. It's kind of like those payoff day candies. When I said I should have done it times 16 batch. I probably, let's see, I think I did, what was it? 
I did a times four batch of the Cinnabomb cake and I probably should have done, done a times eight batch so we could have got several more in the freezer, but that's okay. We will just continue to go at it. And here I am wrapping up those two extra Cinnabomb cakes for the freezer. And I'm just labeling them. I'm wrapping them in foil and then I'm going to wrap them in some plastic wrap. Now I did buy the big foil and the big plastic wrap at Costco, but I still have several of these smaller foil and plastic wraps that I need to use up. So I'm using those first before we start getting out the Mega Mama foil. <laughs> but we do, we at least own them now again, and I will date them when I open them and we'll just see how long it takes to go through. And there we go, ready for the freezer. And so now I am taking the sweet potatoes that I prepped in the slow cooker and we are getting those out into a Rubbermaid container and those will just be eaten as needed from the refrigerator. I was out of cottage cheese. That's a true Healthy Mama recipe there to have low-fat cottage cheese on top of your sweet potato. Don't knock it until you try it. And I was out, but I did get some more in my recent grocery order, of course. So that's my favorite way to eat them. I also like to eat them with the brown sugar substitute by Swerve or Monk Fruit on top or just a little bit of butter yummy sweet potato things. But we're doing it. We're continuing to get these last items wrapped up, doing our double wrap, and we are gonna get those in the freezer. We have the soup in so many containers. We have different Rubbermaid containers with many good frozen freezer meal items that we made during this, oh, all this, all these freezer cooking days. However many it ad ended up being, we picked away at it. We did it, we're victorious. My freezers are getting happy, not as full as I'd like them to be, but definitely happy. And lots of this we are putting to use. I'll talk to you in those comments below, friends. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon with another brand new video. Bye-bye.